One of the most exciting fighters in the UFC. I don't think there's any question about that. And he has been a, uh, a busy man as of late, a new addition to the family, Baby Ace. Michael, congratulations. What's up, boys and girls? Thank you, man. It's, uh, it's a little bit bittersweet because I haven't even gotten to – I spent a little bit of time with him in a hospital and then a little bit at the hotel, and then I went straight back to training camp. Can't wait to go get the W tomorrow and get my hand raised and go be a father of two boys. That's going to be a, a fun trip back home. You've been on this show with us before. You know how it works. You know we talk about the odds. You are the biggest favorite on the main card, but knowing you just a little bit, I don't think that's impacted your, your training at all for this one. No, and, and I can tell you this. I was talking to GC and, and, and everybody before the fight when it comes to the, the fighter meetings, and I've, I've trained and com compete, trained and prepared for a lot of people that I was a – thousand to one favorites in it didn't matter if they were the worst fighter in the world or the best fighter in the world i was always focused on becoming my best self so i don't care if i'm the favorite the underdog it doesn't change my preparation it doesn't change my my mentality i'm gonna go out there and get my hand raised i've always known you mike to make sure you cross all your t's dot your i's now the next day and a half what does it look like for you do you go back now you just recover you rehydrate and then what do you do? Are you watching TV? Are you spending time? Are you doing anything physically today? What does Michael Chandler do on Friday leading into Saturday? A lot of these things. A lot of <laughs> liquids. A lot. Start, start reintroducing some good food. Um, and then really just be around my, my, uh, my closest of teammates and family. I mean, I've got some great people here with me. Uh, my wife and son are currently in the air right now flying. Uh, they'll be landing here before uh, before weigh-ins. Um, so I will hopefully see them, give them a big hug and a kiss, really just hang out, veg out, let my body recover. It was It's always a tough weight cut for me because I am a, a larger 155-pounder. Um, so just rehydrate, chill out, be around the team, start talking a little bit about game plan and stuff tonight. Mike, it's, it's, it's time to... It's time to kill or be killed, though. So as the family comes in, is it a quick hug and then they kind of go on their own? Or do they hang out with you a little bit? Because as an athlete, generally, I, it was always a bit of separation as you get close to the actual encounter. So do you, do you hug Hap? Do you give Bree a kiss? Then you go, all right, guys, I'll see you guys on the other side. Or, or do they hang out with you a little bit? You ain't laying in bed watching movies with them on Friday afternoon, are you? No, man, it's, it's a good question. I mean, it's I, I'm very good at turning it on and turning it off. I am when I'm when I'm present being a father, I want to be 100 percent a father for a small, short period of time and then go back straight into business mode. So they'll get in. I'll, I'll you know, I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks, which is a long time for me um, to be away from them. So I want to get, get my hands on. I want to hug them and kiss them. Um, to talk to Hap a little bit about what what's going to happen over the next couple um, the next day or so and uh, then tell them to be on their way and go hang out with every, everyone else who's coming and uh, just me get back to business focused on the task at hand focused on doing what I do best which is put my hands on people put butts in seats and entertain the fans and get my hand raised continuing to stake my claim as the best lightweight on the planet. Michael when you face a guy like Tony Ferguson who is so unorthodox and so funky and you know we saw Kamaru trying to do the Imanari rolls which was a whole other thing but you know truly though how much how much do you try to incorporate his funk and his weirdness into your training in preparing for him it's a good question um to be quite honest I think I just like I talked about when I fought Charles I'm not exactly good at jiu-jitsu but I'm good at anti-jiu-jitsu I use my wrestling uh to thwart any BJJ traditional jiu-jitsu attacks I think that's going to be very similar when we see Tony Ferguson there's gonna be certain things that Tony Ferguson does that to other guys other body types other guys with less strength less speed less power less less athleticism and um, body awareness uh, body awareness and I'm just gonna be able to stop whatever he, whatever he throws to, to my hope at least uh on the ground and on the feet so i'm prepared to take this fight wherever it goes you, i want you guys to see a a complete performance i don't want to just show that i can go out there and slang leather i can take guys down i can beat the the tar out of them on the ground and uh, i can get submissions so uh we'll see how the fight plays out but i i think i'm just gonna use my my gifts to stop a lot of what tony ferguson does good um in that unorthodox nature of his 
and going off that as well, you know, you're one of the most entertaining fighters in the world right now, coming off the fight of the year. Do you put like extra pressure on yourself to want to make this a war and a battle where it is exciting? Because his last two fights that he, he went against, they took him down, they held him down, and they controlled him very well. You know your wrestling background, it'll be easy for you to take him down and control him. Or do you want to go out there and be like, I want another fight of the year candidate. I want to, I want to go out there, like you said, put butts in the seat. You know, um, there's there's a there's a part of me, a part of my DNA, a part of my makeup that that completely loves the carnage and the chaos, uh, which is a good thing because, as you know, you can't teach that. It's really hard to teach that. It's either something that's inside of you or it's not. So. Um, I'm excited and or I'm very grateful that I have that inside of me, but I want you guys to see and I want the fans to see and I want my, my team to see a perfect performance. And oftentimes a perfect performance isn't the most chaotic, tied onto a tornado, uh, full of ups and downs, a la fight of the year worthy. I don't want fight of the year. I want a quick performance of the night, knock out of the night, get my hand raised, kiss my kiss my wife and son and go uh, go celebrate. Um, but so I'm prepared for a 15 minute war. I'm prepared for a fight of the year candidate if it goes there. But I'm uh, I'm hoping for a quick a quick finish or a or just a, a very dominant victory that doesn't look so back and forth that would turn into a fight of the year. DC, I don't know if you remember, but when we were on the golf course with Mike Chandler, he dominated off the tee. Do you remember how far he hit that ball? Was, I mean, I, I think would, it was those tight pants that he, he was wearing. He, Chandler had the tightest <laughs> golf shorts I've ever seen in my life. Tight, <laughs> always tight, tight and short. Tight and short. You have to go tight and short. You have to go bright colors. You yeah. got to make a statement on the golf course, especially when you suck at golf. Hey, but you bomb, you bomb it when you get a hold of it. Before we let you go, I just want to know how you would describe Daniel Cormier's tee shot. Mm. Wow, that's my boy. Now, Chandler, Daniel Cormier's Chandler, don't lose focus yeah. on my friendship, buddy. Don't go crazy here, yeah. buddy. I'm imitating tomorrow. <laughs> no, listen, though, the most, the most beautiful thing about friendship that I've always enjoyed is <laughs> seeing people's flaws and loving them through their flaws. <laughs> Daniel Cormier looks like a baby giraffe being birthed into an African (laughs) safari (laughs) desert with his little legs and his weird little weird little tick and then the ball goes left to right but we love him anyway that's why that's why we go and play golf with him he'll he will cheat he will lie he will steal your ball and he will definitely try to steal your money but that's why we love him. hey Chandler look at my favorite my favorite my favorite one in the bag that old foot wedge the old foot wedge is my favorite club (laughs) well where's it at (laughs) He saw it firsthand. I'm glad he's on. Hey, Michael, great talking to you. Good luck. Hopefully we can have you on the weigh-in show again when you're not fighting. Uh, Can't wait to see you go tomorrow night. You got it. I appreciate you all. Thank you.